We describe the influenza life cycle and the mechanism of action of endonuclease and neuraminidase inhibitors. We distinguish between influenza and other respiratory infections and we designed a therapeutic regimen for influenza. We also listed the likely causative pathogens for rhinosinusitis and pharyngitis. Now, given a patient with acute bacterial rhinosinusitis, recommend an appropriate therapeutic regimen. These are the 2012 IDSA gui uh, guideline recommendations for bacterial rhinosinusitis. And they do recommend that empiric treatment uh, should be initiated as soon as possible if you suspect uh, bacterial rhinosinusitis. And this is for the purpose of shortening the duration of illness and to provide earlier symptom relief, restore quality of life, and also to prevent recurrent infection or superative uh, complications. Now, keep in mind that the common pathogens for bacterial rhinosinusitis are the uh, strep pneumo and strep pyogenes, which are gram positive, and H influenza, influenzae, and Moraxella catarrhalis, which are gram negative. Uh, gram positives stain uh, blue on uh, gram stain, so uh, they are positively blue for you, and gram negative uh, organisms stain pink on, uh, on the gram stain. So that's the primary difference between those two. So the preferred drug of choice for acute bacterial rhinosinusitis is amoxicillin clavulinate. And that's recommended over amoxicillin because uh, H-flu and Moraxella catarrhalis are likely to produce beta-lactamases, which will break down amoxicillin. Uh, clavulonic acid will actually block those beta-lactamases. So amoxicillin clavulinate is uh, first choice. Now, if someone has risk factor for drug resistance strep pneumo, uh, you can also use a higher dose of this to overcome the resistance uh, in uh, strep pneumo. So, two grams uh, twice a day of amoxicillin clavulonic acid. Now, alternatively, if uh, so, you know, if for some reason someone could not tolerate uh, amoxicillin clavulonate, we can consider doxycycline. Now. You know, the reason this is an alternative is because doxycycline ha has, uh, does not have best activity against drug resistance strep pneumo. However, this is considered alternative because it does have good activity against H. flu and Moraxella ca catarrhalis. So, um, you know, but if someone can uh, tolerate uh, amox amoxicillin cl clavulonic acid, they should uh, receive the, that first. Now the guideline says that beta-lactam agents should uh, sh are preferred over respiratory fluoroquinolones uh, for initial uh, empiric antimicrobial therapy, and that's a very good recommendation. And you know, as we know, respiratory fluoroquinolones are more likely to cause collateral damage, and also to add more to it, uh, you know, in 2016 the FDA added to the black box warning for fluoroquinolones. So this is from the levofloxacin package insert where the black box warning is serious adverse reactions including uh, tendonitis, uh, tendon rupture, peripheral neuropathy, and central nervous system. And more specifically, the FDA said because fluoroquinolones, including levofloxacin, have been associated with serious adverse reactions, which are listed above, uh, you should reserve levofloxacin for use in patients who have no alternative treatment options for the following indications. So that includes urinary tract infections. So someone with uncomplicated urinary tract infections, if they have options, they should receive those other options. So only use fluoroquinolones if there are no other options. Uh, the same is true with bacterial uh, uh, sinusitis or rhinosinusitis. So if someone has, uh, you know, if someone can tolerate amoxicillin clavulinate, uh, then they should uh, get that instead of levofloxacin. Now, these are the things that you should avoid. So, macrolides, uh, so azithromycin does not have good activity against uh, drug resistant strep pneumo, so that should be uh, avoided. Uh, trim sulfa does not have good activity against drug resistant strep pneumo or H flu, so it should be avoided. Uh, second and third generation oral cephalosporins do not have good activity against drug resistant strep pneumo, so they should be avoided. And of course, clindamycin uh, does not have activity against gram negatives, so monotherapy should not be used. So if you are to use clindamycin, you should also use a second agent to cover H. flu and Moraxella catarrhalis. 
and that the, and you know clindamycin is also associated with uh, clostridioides difficile and it's likely to cause collateral damage it does have activity against gram negatives uh, so clindamycin should also be reserved last line uh, for people who cannot uh, tolerate other things um, and even then it should not be used mon as monotherapy it should be used in combination so in patients with penicillin allergy it's recommended to either use doxycycline or respiratory fluoroquinolone so this is where uh, using a respiratory fluoroquinolone is okay because now the patient has allergy to penicillin so they can no longer take um, augmentin so now it's okay to use fluoroquinolones because the patient is running out of option and doxycycline you know so you might choose fluoroquinolone over doxycycline because doxycycline um, doesn't work well against drug resistant strep pneumo but if the patient doesn't have risk factor for drug resistant strep pneumo then they can totally use doxycycline because it it will uh, have good activity now there are also some recommendation for an adjunctive therapy so intranasal saline irrigation and intranasal corticosteroids can can be helpful in conjunction with antibiotics uh, the idc does not recommend topical or, uh, or oral uh, decongestant um, and they also do not recommend antihistamines uh, specifically for bacterial rhinosinusitis because uh, of a lack of efficacy. Lastly, the duration of therapy for acute bacterial uh, rhinosinusitis is 5 to 7 days regardless of which agent is used.